Hi guys, Ace Face back with another video for you and today I have a video about the London GT which is an event that I went to um, almost a month ago now and um, it's been a while I haven't managed to really get time to kind of make this video but I thought I'd make one for you now um, just so you can kind of you know hear a little bit about how I did, what I brought I think you guys find it interested um, so let's start at the beginning so this was a pretty much a secret, secret squirrel um, type um, tournament build up um, because I'm not proud of it um, I'm you know I feel a little bit embarrassed be truthful um, so the London GT is well it, it was um, it's a an ETC tournament so it's pretty hardcore you know there's it, the, the restrictions from the ITC aren't in there um, you could build my very very horrendous lists um, and it does favour certain armies significantly more than others. It was not the right um, breeding ground for my Tyranids, let's put it that way. Um, and there was no Tyranid. Uh, there was 80, 80 odd players, there was no Tyranids there. Um, there might have been a couple of Orcs, there was very few Chaos Space Marines, so you get the picture anyway. So this was pretty hardcore stuff. Um, not my favourite kind of format, as I kind of I've made it quite clear. Um, but it's I do like it because it is an it's ultimately an opportunity to kind of really play the filth um, and just see. You know, I like the filth, but compared well, what was out there? Wowie! So supremacy suits were everywhere. Um, Riptide wings were everywhere. D was everywhere. You name it, it was there. Warhounds, Revenant Titans you name it, it was there, so it, it would bring the filth time. So, um, what did I bring? So I brought, I brought Eldar, yeah, so I've been toying, I'm always toying around with lists, whether I buy them or, or whatever, I'm always playing around toying, toying with lists, and I came up with this list, and I thought it potentially ticked every box of what I would consider a perfect list. Um, an absolute Tixel box list. So what that army was, was it was a Farseer on a jet bike with the stone to kind of give him re-rolls on, on psychic powers and, and what have you. So um, something stone of an Athlon or whatever. Anyway, I don't really play it. So, but anyway, so Farseer on a jet bike. I then had five units of five jet bike, no, five units of three jet bikes, all with scatter lasers, um, there, that was my MSU part, you know, nice and quick, loads of shots, loads of strength six, very broken, works really well, um, and then I had a Wraith Knight with D cannons, um, so broken, basically broken, um, but, you know, as I was proven in the tournament, it was no broken than the next next uh, list which unfortunately is what tends to be wrong with the game when you get to this level but there you go if you can't beat them join them and I still had a crack in time um, I then took for the remainder of my list I took the Riptide Wing so you guys have wanted to see the Riptide Wing in action um, everybody's been telling me over and over again how good the Riptide Wing is so I thought it was a good opportunity for me to take it so I took five Riptides in all I took a unit of three and I took two units of one um, I took four burst, heavy burst cannons, and I took one ion cannon. Um, I took a combination of the secondary weapons, so I took a couple of the, the missiles, which I probably should have taken all of, but there you go. A couple of plasmas and one fusion, um, all had interceptor, a couple had skyfire, um, the rest had target locks, so they could all shoot at different targets. Um, no um, stimulant injectors, just didn't have the points, and that was my 1850 points. So basically, Riptides and Eldar, the best Eldar. So it was a pretty broken list. Um, it was gonna do some work. It was. I brought this list to win. That's as simple as that. I'm not gonna try and hide it. Literally, 
it was in my mind a little bit of a broken format um you know it it, it only really favors the the filthiest and the strongest armies it's that type of tournament um but it was local to me it was the first london gt and i wanted to be involved in it um so that was that was what i, what I brought so i painted up some some elder which you'll kind of see kind of popping up now really really pleased how they came out um really really enjoyed them I, they have been sold already um so i feel cleansed of the filth of the zelda i no longer own any elder again they're all gone i think it's about the fourth elder army that i've had and sold because it's just dirty um so they're gone now but anyway so really pleased with how they came out i i made i painted them so they went with the towel Basically, that was the theme of it. I didn't want them to look out of place, so I kind of made them different, but they they fitted in with the town. So, so that that was that was that was the list. So, got to the event. Um, so it's the very first event. Terrain very sparse. Um, I don't want to criticise the guys, you know, because now I'm a tournament organisation organiser. I know how difficult it is. Um, there's a hell of a lot that goes into it and it's not easy and it's not cheap. Um, so I get it. And these guys were aiming to cater for 200 players, which is a huge, huge, huge task. Um, so, you know, hats off to them there. The terrain, I think, was just a little bit too big a step for them. They weren't ready to kind of completely cater for all these tables. So each table had a bit of terrain on it. You know, it didn't really have enough terrain on it. Um, and the terrain itself wasn't very varied and it didn't really give you it there was no line of sight blocking pretty much anywhere on any table with it with the exception of very small models or models that you could turn to the side that kind of get in between windows but basically there's no line of sight blocking so for some certain armies it was pretty much game over from the fact they couldn't hide um at all which was a bit crippling so terrain wasn't great it also wasn't quite it wasn't painted which was a bit of a pain um all the tables had lovely mats, you know, and the, the halls themselves were nice, you know, a bit warm, um, but, you know, you can't complain about that. And um, it was, and the venue itself was a nice central venue in London, so it was a good venue, um, and it was pretty well organised. The guys did a good job, particularly with so many people, um, and, you know, I'm sure that, that they will get better and better next year, so, you know, I, I'm not here to criticise at all. It, it was generally a well-run event, particularly for an event with so many people. So the first game that I played, I played against a really kind of fun, fluffy KDK army. Um, it wasn't optimized. It was just it was using the the the, the format, the um, the decorium style. Um, so it had lots of blood tie um, points racked up pretty quickly. Um, but you know it was a it was a fairly basic KDK um, sort of list, um, and. Yeah, it wasn't a good day for him because he it was just kind of the worst match up match up for him because I could just stay out of range and I could just basically obliterate everything as it came towards me. Um and that's basically what happened. So it was a total whitewash. It wasn't really a game, but the guy was an absolute gentleman. Um he was a really nice guy. He played in the spirit of it, he kept smiling all the way through. We had lots of funny things happened. Um a blood crusher took out the Wraith Knight um over the course of about three rounds of combat. Um it was crazy, absolute crazy. So you know, there was some fun things that happened in the game. It was it was a laugh. Um, I tried to be as nice as possible because the game was over before it even started. And unfortunately, that's what happens when when you let kind of the unrestricted D come through, I suppose, because I kind of like D and stuff for fun. Anyway, that's a different story altogether. We spoke about that in depth in other videos and at the beginning of this one. So that was the first game. Got a, got a clear win there. Um, my second game, again, I think... The I think the guy's name was Ian. I can't remember, so sorry if you're watching this, um, because it, it was an awesome guy, absolutely awesome guy. So the way they did it at the London GT was they didn't rank your first two games, so you had two random games rather than normal kind of one. So the second game of mine was another random one, even though that I had kind of full scored the first game. Um, I didn't necessarily play someone that had likewise done it, so I actually played someone that had come off the back of a loss. He was an absolute top guy. Um, he brought a almost like a zombie list, so it was like a um, full to world army list 
build like tons of zombies that continuously come back and are big super heavy. Um, so it wasn't a bad list to be fair. Um, but he just didn't really, it, with, with very little cover um, and him having to come forward with not a lot of shooting, he kind of knew what was happening. He knew I had about 108 strength 6 shots each turn. So I was just going to be removing half his army and he just didn't fancy it. He just really didn't fancy it. And you know, he held his hands up. He wasn't being a bad sport. You know, he felt more bad towards me and I felt bad towards him. But he just, to be fair, he didn't really want to play the game. That wasn't what he came to play. He won't, didn't come to bring his army to play that type of thing. So... We didn't call it because he didn't want me to kind of to be, he didn't want to say that he didn't want to play the game. So he just deployed, you know, a couple of units and I just tabled him. Um, it was absolutely a voluntary table, um, but we talked about, we had a laugh, we were talking about, you know, all sorts of other tournaments and, 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 and you know, talking about all sorts. And in the end, we sort of, after about five, ten minutes of chatting, we both went down the pub and we spent the next next two hours while everyone was gaming in a hot hall we were getting the beers in having a laugh so you know and that's what war gaming is all about so you know it was a bad match up for him he didn't want to play the game but we still made use of those two hours and had a laugh um, and it was and it was absolutely awesome so you know top top lad um, and great fun you know it wasn't a great fun game but it was a great fun event um, from that point of view so that was two two games in two wins even though obviously one was basically a, a, a you know, he, he threw in the towel. The third game I played was awesome. Awesome, awesome game. So I played a guy and he had a battle company. Um, and he had, now I believe, what were they? I can't remember whether they were Iron Hands or whether they were Imperial Fists. I don't know Space Marines well enough, but basically... I think they were re-roll armor pen, so you guys probably know straight away what one that was. So he had quite an unconventional um, battle company, he had quite a lot of las cannons. So he kind of he went for a bit of range, and he had a lot of razorbacks, and you know, and he had some grav bikes. It was a really nice list, and he went on to do really, really well. In fact, he ended up on top table in the last game and drew his last game. So he was he was really you know he was he was. He was going some, this guy, and he was a really, really good player. I mean, hats off to him. It was his worst game of the whole tournament because he had, it was kill points, and he had tons of kill points, and I didn't have very many. Um, but he played it smart. He played it really, really well, and it was ultra, ultra close. So in the end, um, I absolutely smashed him on kill points, but... He got, it was the, the Maelstrom mission where you score any numbered points so you can you can control things even on their, on that's on your opponent's side. So he scored loads of my points because he was getting on all the objectives. So as much as I could clear him quickly, he was racking up the Maelstrom points. And in fact, he just shaded it and just took the victory. Um, but it was really close margin, so I still scored high on it. Um, but it was ultra, ultra close, and he had to play spot on to be able to beat me. So it was a real test of how good I could game and how good he could game. And it was a kind of, a, it's the perfect matchup that you want, you know. It was just real, real tactical, real cat and mouse. So at the first, at the beginning of the game, he came at me like an absolute brick. Um, and and then at the end of the game, I was chasing him off and he was hiding in the corner by the end. So it was real kind of backwards and forward, awesome game. But I, he just shaded that and he came out with the, the points on that game. So then Saturday night, standard, got hammered. It woke up on Sunday morning with a bit of a headache. That's kind of how it works. Um, with a very light pocket being in London and drinks prices. So. Um, so Sunday, my first game on Sunday, I rocked up and I was playing a Revenant Titan. So that is my own fault for bringing horrendous filth because I then end up playing a Revenant Titan. So I played a Revenant Titan with a Bastion and some scatter bikes and a Seer Council. Um, so yeah, and that is as horrible as it sounds. Thankfully, I absolutely got lucky. I got so lucky because that was a horrendous match for me um, because I've got big monstrous creatures, he's got lots of D, um, and then Revenant Titans are almost impossible to damn kill these days, um, which I didn't realise until I played that game. So what happened was, 
he got a first term and he jumped up and yeah it, it weren't pretty but he absolutely messed up his D shots on his Revenant Titan um, I got away with it so he put four large blasts on my um, Wraith Knight they all hit directly on top of him then he rolled three ones and one two and then I what did I get? I'm trying to remember I think I had I had cover I believe because it was a big bit of terrain even though it was all windows and I passed my save on that so I actually took no wounds from four D blasts on my head insane um, and then I, the luck continued so then in my turn I then turned around two D's and then to hit the Revenant Titan you then have to get another four plus to actually so you've got 50-50 chance of not even being able to hit him after you've hit him which I then rolled again, hit him again and then I rolled a six and then I rolled another six bang, gone so I deed the Revenant Titan out of the game which was insane and so lucky but that's what happens, you know and, and ultimately that was the risk he took with bringing one model basically then the rest of the, the rest of the game all I did was just slowly but surely chip away at basically invincible Death Star you couldn't really hurt it, I was just chipping away at it but because it didn't have a lot of damage output um, it, there was not a lot it could do, it needed to kind of stay out of range, it didn't want me charging it um, so yeah, it, I slowly but surely I just chipped away at it and it went so um, and then I, so I tabled him and got the victory so I actually went into the final game on table three and an opportunity to win the tournament. This sounds familiar, um, which is where I always find it hard. Coming to the last game, not taking things seriously, struggling with a hangover. So I went into the last game and I played, um, I played the dreaded Warp Spider spam list. So I played 60 Warp Spiders, um, yeah. And that was, and I mean, to be fair, the guy I was playing was a top player, you know, he was a, a an international player, so he's involved in the England team, um, really good player, um, so, you know, you have to take your hats off, you have to, you know, he, he was an experienced player, knew what he was doing, brought Alias to him, um, and he actually got quite unlucky, I think, in the game before, of potentially, he was on for the ultimate win as well, so... It, you know, the the guy was a very, very, very good player. But on top of that, he brought the absolute ultimate filth. And it was great because this was the first, even though I'd seen it happen, it's the first time I played the dreaded warp spider spam to see what it did. And man, it is horrendous. So he obliterated me. And bearing in mind, I had... Interceptor on all my Riptides but, and he deep struck most of his Warp Spiders but they're just so damn resilient with the fact they can jump away and what he found, obviously this was the last game of the tournament he found that he could actually get a Warp Spider to hide in between the very small bit in between the windows and I couldn't see him so all I had that could deal with him were the missiles that didn't need line of sight and there weren't enough of them he had X arches in every single unit so they were fearless so I could make the bastards run away um, and yeah he, he absolutely nuked me he absolutely nuked me so he was basically all warp spiders he had a wraith knight and he had a D battery um, it was a horrendous list absolutely horrendous um, but I brought an absolutely horrendous list so I was absolutely happy to be beaten by that um, did I enjoy the game? No, I didn't enjoy the game at all. Um, I couldn't hit the damn things. They are horrendous. Warp spiders are horrendous. Um, but but yeah, that's it, you know. I mean, ultimately, that's what Elder are. Um, so yeah, so I came unstuck, and in the end, I finished, I think I finished 10th. So 10th out of 80 people. But, you know, I was in the hat for the for the cup if, if I'd won that last game. So... You know, thoroughly enjoyed it. I love tough tournaments. It was really bring your A game stuff. It was, you know, no take no prisoners. As I said, there were supremacy suits on about five of the top tables. Um, it was 
it was hardcore stuff. So hats off to Conrad. Um, he won the tournament. He had a stunning elder army, um, warp hunters, oh, whatever, hornets, really dirty list as well, but all Eldar, really nice and balanced, had something to take on everybody. Um, he also got loads of hobby points as well because his army was stunning. So he took he took the tro he took the trophy. Um, so well done to him. Really nice guy. I'm going to say that because he watches the channel and he'll probably watch this video. Um, but top lad and well deserved. Um, but the top players, you know, there were some horrendous lists out there. So it was nice to be on those top tables at the end because it was nice to be able to mix it with the top, which is always where I want to be. So you know, I'm proud of kind of where I came as far as. As, as in the pecking order, it would have been nice to take the trophy home, um, but you know, ultimately that warp spider list was just a little bit too nasty, and I, I wasn't experienced enough in playing it to be able to take it out. Maybe if I played it again, I could have done a few things differently, but I, no regrets. It was it was it was a fair game. Um, so yeah, ultimately, really good tournament. Really enjoyed it. Um, not my favourite format. Don't really like ETC as much because. I don't like the fact it does stop a little bit of the variety from factoring. Um, you know, this is not my favourite from that point of view. Um, the guys definitely need to work on their terrain, but you know, hats off to the guys. They put on a really good tournament. I thoroughly enjoyed it. If they put on another one next year, I'll be giving them my money to come back again. So you know, well done to them guys. Um, if the, if the, as I said, if they put the event again, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know about it because it's a. Uh, I think it's worthwhile going to have another crack on it next year. Um, so thanks very much for watching guys um, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.